What's up, guys? I'm here today with Manny Alexander. How are you doing? We've been uh, a little busy the past few weeks. Hadn't been able to do a podcast, but we're back at it now. Glad to have him back in. We've been uh, all over the place, man. We went to Iowa. We've had a good trip. What have you been up to, man? I actually wish I could have made it to Iowa. Me too. That was wild. Man, that um, all the times I've been up there, there's always been such a good like response to what we're doing down here Definitely. and stuff. And it, it, it's nice to see, like instead of you know sitting around here, you know at karaoke Joe's and you know we're just, you know talking like locker room talk with the boys and stuff like that. It's nice to see it come into like fruition. Yeah. You know, and actually have, you know, the fans out there, you know, oh, yeah, you know, like with Asher and with Bryce, especially Bryce, um, with, you know, that being his hometown. Yeah. With uh, coming out there and stuff. And then, you know, they just, we just keep pulling people right. from there. And we're packing out bars like they've never been packed out before. Uh, Lock 12 actually said that they, that was the biggest crowd they've had in there since they've opened seven years ago. It was this past time. So, I mean, it was awesome. Uh, we sold out hats in about six minutes. Jesus. Yeah, like, as soon as we pulled them out and Jesse Charette, mm. he's like, we're music's here, they're selling hats, they were gone. Yeah. Instantly. Well, Jesse's is, a good boy. Yeah. That boy right there can flat out sing. Yes, sir. I love it. But we, tell me a little bit about you, what you got going on, man. Like, um, it's trying to stay busy. Um Really just booking, booking, yeah, you know, booking. booking shows, yeah. trying to book festivals. I've uh, yeah. been in the studio last week, all last week. I um, think we put a total of 24 hours in the studio. 24 hours in. Yeah. Ain't bad. For, uh, so you got an EP coming out. Yes, sir, I do. And it is yet to be titled. <laughs> yet to be titled. Yeah. That should be the title. I'm down with it. <laughs> <laughs> I know your style, so. Man, it's... It's just good to be back home, and we got the War Trace Music Festival tonight. Got a buddy of ours playing, or two buddies, Asher Cataldo, Justin Williams. Yep, they're with uh, Dallas Moore. And Dallas also, Moore. Dallas Moore is going to close the night up. It's going to be a good night. But we decided to get this podcast in because me and Manny have been busy as crap here lately. Yes, and sir. I've been wanting to get in with you, and I mean, hell, it's just two bros sitting here talking, <laughs> drinking beer, <laughs> yeah. trying to get your story out there. Uh, tell me what got you into music and what got you. Um, what got me into music uh, initially, when I was a real little kid, um, my dad uh, back in like 86, 87 was a roadie for a lot of heavy metal acts. Right. And um, so uh, I lived sort of a sheltered childhood um, and uh, I, you know, I wasn't really allowed to, like, go to concerts and stuff like that. M- my dad would go to Hastings because we lived in Tullahoma. Right. Yeah. And my dad would go to Hastings over there, and he would bring home these DVDs of, like, uh, Iron Maiden and Megadeth and, you know, stuff like that. And I watched all these live performances, and it used to scare me. Yeah. All the, like, the heavy metal. But then, you know, as I, I, I grew into it, um, you know, it it really like became a a standpoint right uh for like lyrical content mostly um and then um i i I got my first guitar when i was about eight years old at a church auction and um what i did to learn is i i my dad was a trucker you know throughout my childhood and uh he gave me a radio like rca radio uh um before he left one time and um he gave me two CDs, and one was Green Day's Dookie, and the other was Ted Nugent's Greatest Hits. And so I sat there and learned, you know, like, Brain Stew and stuff like that, right. you know, and then, you know, Cat Scratch Fever with Ted Nugent, Stranglehold yeah. and stuff, and I'd sit there and listen to it and just pick out what I thought sounded right. And um, from there... Um, I started uh, trying to sing and stuff like that. Like the first song I ever sang in front of like an actual crowd was me and my brother uh, sang um, Green Eyes by Coldplay at this little talent show they had for our church when I was a kid. And that's like, man, it's just like the response to that. And, you know, being 
10 years old right, and, right. you know playing a guitar and stuff like that in front of people and you know the the applause and stuff like that you know not saying by any means that it was good you know <laughs> but, um, but the response from the crowd yeah was good, so. and that uh that gave me like even that young that gave me this stigma of i want to do this yeah you know for the for the rest of my life yeah, I'd really like to make a career out of this, and then. Um, so you started singing in church. Mm-hmm. Yep, as uh, many boys do. Yeah. Down here, but that, um. That's that's the common occurrence with everybody I've talked to is yeah. Yeah. They started out singing in church. I mean, which is great. Yeah. Well, but. I the the thing about it is like um I feel like. I kind of had a very different church experience than a lot of people around here right. because uh, if anybody that's uh, listening to this knows, like, the LDS Mormons, that's what I grew up in. So we yeah. didn't have, like, a choir right. or anything like that. We just all stood up, you know, during, they call it sacrament, and uh, we all stood up and sang, like, hymns. Like, um, for some reason, I, I remember this distinctly, for some reason, one of the most popular hymns in church was the um, uh, Confederate, uh, <laughs> oh my. like the uh, glory, glory, yeah. hallelujah. Oh, yeah, and I'll belt that out, dude, every time. <laughs> glory, glory, hallelujah, you know, <laughs> and everything. And I love that song. And then, you know, getting older and stuff like that. I was like, oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh no. <laughs> That's but, hilarious. But, um, yeah. So, like, we didn't have, like, a choir or, like, a chorus or anything like that. Right. We just all, like, kind of stood up and sang. And, you know, you hear, you know, old, you know, old Becky on the back of you singing that <laughs> a tune and stuff. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was, well, I would call somebody out on that. But it was a family member of mine at my church that, bless her heart, she could not carry a tune in a bucket. But Hell, <laughs> Praise be, man. She was, she was singing for something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and um, th- you know, through there, I was like, yeah, I want to do this. And then uh, at 16, I wrote my first song, uh, Friday, I called it, and um, you know, kind of sat on that, didn't really show it to anybody. And then um, two years later, I left uh, overseas for the military. Right. At uh, 18 years old, right out of high school, I joined the Navy, and um, got to go to all these different countries. And I still, you know, had my guitar with me and stuff like that. And um, like I got to play in Hong Kong, Thailand, Japan, right. you know, not like official shows, but like but, at these bars, yeah. you know, I'd always have it with me. Um, and, you know, people over there love it and stuff. So like when I'd get down on my luck a little bit, cause I used to not be very good with finances and I wanted to drink, I'd go out to this bar called G-Rock in, J- in uh, Nagasaki, Japan. Mm-hmm. And they had a guitar up on the wall with a capo and everything, and it was out of tune. I sat there and tuned it up, and I started playing, you know, like little little snippets of songs and stuff. And people would buy me drinks to to play those songs and stuff like that. It's a pretty that. good day. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> hell yeah! <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> buy all the drinks you want to. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah. play all night long. Yeah, and I was like, people love, it. and I got to I got to know a lot of like locals and stuff yeah. through that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then um, I got out of the military, uh, came home, and for some reason, by happenstance, one day I ended up at this place called the Pick and Chicken. Yeah, I remember that night. Yeah, and I was wearing my little denim jacket, and you know, um, I'd never played like really in front of like. A bunch Crowd, of people, yeah, yeah. and I, I played some Tyler Childers songs, yeah. and then it just all kind of went from there. You know, me, Asher, and everybody became uh, fast friends. I Asher met, was playing that night, and he mm-hmm. asked if he wanted to play or something yeah. like that. Him and uh, Zach Donegan yeah. were playing that night, and shout out to Zach. He's a Zach. very very talented vocalist. Oh, yeah, Great definitely. Guy. I love yeah. that guy. Haven't seen him in a while, but I need to get back, get back to my roots and go see him, you know. Yeah. We we used to hang out all the time. Mm-hmm. If you seen me, you seen Zach. If you seen Zach, you seen me. Yep. Mutt and Jeff, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of guitars, oh, <laughs> I, I gotta ask because I know this ain't your guitar, but it might be. I don't know. No, it ain't. <laughs> okay. Uh. Did you have fun last night, bud? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, uh, 
so recently I, I started talking to uh, to the, a real sweet girl. Uh, I'm not going to call her out by name on here, but she, she's a sweetheart. And um, so I went out with her last night and everything and went to a uh, went to an event at Disc Insider. And I got to uh, hang out with uh, Coleman Williams the fourth, yeah. uh, Hank Hank Williams the third's son, son, yeah. Right. And he was super super cool guy, you yeah. know, like you know, Chill. I didn't even shake his hand when I met him. He came up and gave me a hug, like right. he he was dope. And then um, I met like some of his players and stuff, and we went over to this, um, we went over to this uh, bar called the Lipstick Lounge, yeah. And um, it's pretty seedy, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And it's, oh, shit. And it's this uh, pretty pretty extravagant place over there on the east end of Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> I broke Todd. <laughs> All right, continue. Yeah, and we hung. And that's the funny thing is we're all just like tattooed up, yeah. like cowboy boots and our all black denim and, you know, our bandanas and stuff. And then there's like a bunch of drag queens <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. But um, I bet they fucked with y'all hard. Oh dude, it was funny. Yeah. It was great. They had, like messing with the straight guys. Yeah. I had a had such a great time over there, you know, hanging out um with Coleman at Dick at uh Diskin and then uh hanging out with him and his crew also at uh, uh the lipstick lounge. And so uh, I was with uh my my friend, uh my my real pretty blonde friend and um <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got to do this podcast tomorrow. She wasn't a drag queen, though, right? No. Okay. I really hope. Well, <laughs> never mind. But, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was it, just messing with It's in the paperwork. <laughs> but, um, I, um, excuse me. But I, uh, so I ended up, uh, going, going home with her and everything real great. Um, and then, uh, you know, we got up and went get some coffee and some breakfast and stuff like that. And then uh, you called me. Yeah. And you're like, well, you, can you play two songs? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. And I was like, yeah, totally. I just don't have my guitar. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have my guitar with me. And originally I played a Martin D15M uh, Depression remake. Uh, but she's like, well, I have a guitar. You know, oh, I so like, this is her guitar. Yes, this is this is <laughs> my, my friend's guitar. And it's, uh, it's actually funny... Because it's the same brand as my first guitar yeah. like I ever got. It's a Johnson. Yeah. You know, and um, it's real pretty. Yeah, it it is real pretty, and I got this little fluff ball yeah, here I see on the, the fluff end of ball. it. You know, it's real nice. <laughs> I oh. thought this was going to go somewhere else because you said <laughs> lipstick lounge and the guitar is white, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. I'll get a picture of it for the Instagram cover. Yeah. yeah. But and then she was like, uh, "Well, I got a guitar." She's like, "You can take this." She's like, "I haven't played it in years, but I just changed the strings on it, you know, just yeah. just because I got bored." And I was like, "Hell yeah, I'll take it." You know, it's like I don't really have any other options. And then, um, but yeah, I played it, and I was like, "Dang, this thing, this thing sounds pretty good." She's yeah. like, "Yeah, take it and everything." And uh, you know, I did take it. Yeah, because that just gives me another reason. I should have known with yeah. the case that you brought it in that it was a female's guitar. Yeah. <laughs> should have known instantly. But, but, yeah, I was like, well, hell, it gives me, an, gives me a reason to come back. <laughs> and then, you, <laughs> then you pulled it out, and it's got a fluffy ball hanging off of it. I'm like, what the hell is going on See, here? I'm pretty sure this is a cat toy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a cat toy. Maybe the cat wants to play the guitar. She and don't have bored. any cats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Uh, these bush lights, pretty good. Yes, sir. They are slapping. Well, uh, so you've been in Nashville yes, doing sir. your thing. Very often, more often than uh, more often than I ever have, honestly. And I love it there, oh, man. Dude, it's been so fruitful. So I love fruitful. it there. I've been uh, hanging out with uh, most of the time when I go up there. I've been hanging out uh, with my good friend uh, Carly Rogers. Uh, she's she's uh, been helping me, you know, with like the. Uh, she's good, man. Yeah, she's been helping me with, you know, like uh, introducing me to people and yeah. stuff like that. We're not really in the same genre right. of country and stuff like that, but you know, it's it's really still nice. She's, she knows a lot of people up there. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's been up there for several years mm-hmm. now, and she's just she kills the game up there. Yeah. She does a good job. Yeah, like she introduced me to a man named Sean Pate. 
who uh, is uh, 